this example, I'm going to show you how to use partial milling to cut out the sink and any filleted corners from a rectangle piece of material. This part is already prepared for cutting. I have it broken into cut segments and tool directions set, as we can easily see if I turn on Ghost Tools. I'm just going to delete the table and the countertop on the right. That way we can more easily focus on the cuts that we need to make. As you can see in this example, I have the scrap supported with pods as well. We're going to make our first cut along the front edge and go about halfway around. Then we're going to retract out of a pre-drilled pilot hole and then we'll cut the other side and retract out of the same pilot hole. To create this cut, I'm going to start by going to the Machine tab and selecting the finger bit that I'm going to use to do this sink cutout. I'll double click on the name of the tool to select it, and then I'll click once anywhere in my drawing to make it the current tool. And now I can go to Cut Shape to input my settings. On the Types tab, we'll still use Vertical, but we'll change to Partial. And under the General tab, we'll keep the same settings. The tool that we've selected, Machine Comp, Straight. We'll also keep our similar settings under Levels and Cuts. For 3CM material, I'd use 5 for Safe Rapid Level, Rapid Down to 2, Material Top, 1.2, and Final Cut Depth, I'll leave at 0. Under the Machine tab, I'm going to leave about an eighth inch stock to be left. And then, I'll set my lead in and lead outs. I'll set my lead in to a straight line, and I'll make that line about two times the tool radius in length. And I'll set the approach angle to zero so it will come in straight. And then I'm going to set the lead out to a straight line as well. And I'm going to increase the length of that line to about five times the tool radius. And I'll set the retract angle at 90. There won't be an overlap because this is an open shape, so I'll just set this to zero. And I'll press OK to apply the cut. I'm prompted to pick the start point on the geometry. I'm going to apply the cut to the thinner front edge first. There's two things I'll be watching for when I specify the start point. One is, I'm going to start at the end point and then I'm going to be particular about the endpoint of which line. I won't click when this line is lit up, but I will click when this line is lit up and my snap is at the end of it. Then we're prompted to pick the endpoint geometry, or where we want the cut to end and lead out. I'm going to choose the middle of this edge and I'll want to snap to a location so I can get the other side to go to the exact same point. I'm going to switch to a midpoint instead, so my lead out will be closer to the middle of the two pods. We see we were successful, our selected shape now in blue. And now we're prompted again to pick the next point for the start of the next cut. And I'll choose the endpoint of this line. And then for the end of the cut, I'll again use my midpoint snap so I get to the exact same point as the other cut. And then I'll right click because this is the only thing I have to cut in this drawing with these settings. The tool will start here and go around and lead out here. So we're going to need a hole so the tool can retract out of it. And we can define the exact location by going to draw the circle, 
I'm going to use a 1.375 diameter, the same size as my Corbett. Then I'll snap the center to the end of the existing cut path. We can either cut the circle with cut hole or I'm going to use an existing pilot hole style that I have, which I'll right click on to apply to my circle. And then don't forget that we need to drill the pilot hole before we retract the finger bit. So we'll select that operation and arrow it to the top. This we can verify in simulation. We'll shade solid. I like an isometric view, and then we'll play. First drill the pilot hole, then cut the thinner side, then the other side, and both leadouts go perfectly to the pilot hole. And everything looks good. Now that I'm happy with these cuts and the settings, I'll save them as a style. By going to my operations, and then selecting the style, right-clicking, and choosing Save as a new style. And I'll save it into my Titan 3700 folder, since I made the cut for that machine with that tool configuration. This is also a mill relief cut, made especially for a split sink cutout, so I'll incorporate that into the name. Partial milling can also be used to toolpath a segment of a join geometry. Like before, I'll go to Cut Shape, and most of the settings will be the same as the last cut. But I'll change the lead in and lead outs to the similar settings that we normally use. For this example, I'm just going to choose to get the default settings, since I've previously saved them. The only thing that I might change is the approach and retract angle from a 45 to 90 degrees. And I can zero out the overlap as well. And I'll click OK to apply it. I'll pick my start point at this end of the arc, and then my end point at this end of the arc, along with a right click to finish. The 90 degree leads just give me a little more clearance without adding any more time to my program. Now I can save this as a style as well. And I'll name it accordingly to milling off the corners. And now that we've created and saved our new styles, let's delete the cut paths off this drawing and use them. I'll start by milling off the round corners. And I'll choose to start at this end of the arc and to end at this end of the arc. Next, I'll mill out my sink and I'll do the thinner side first and then the other side, making sure that they end at the same point. Now I have a location for my pilot hole, so I'll start by drawing a circle the same size as my Corbett. Then I'll place the center of the circle at the end of the tool paths so I can apply my pilot hole style to it. Then apply the other styles as you normally do. And always remember to move the pilot hole before the mill bit. And since we're going to be profiling and polishing the sink, we're going to want to add a park and pause after the mill bit cuts it out. So we'll go to our Titan tab. We'll find park and pause and select it. And then you can type in a new message if you wish, and then press the green button before selecting the toolpath to park and pause after, which would be this one. And we'll be able to see our direct input if we have it turned on, both at the end of the toolpath and also in our order of operations, after the finger bit. And finally, we can run the part through simulation to look for any errors before we send the G-code and run it at the machine. Thank you 
for choosing Park Industries.